Hi, I'm Miriam from Fun FTC, and I'm here with Team 7842, the Brown Coats from Alabama. They are here at the World Championship in the Jemison Division, where they made it all the way to Division Semifinals. This, you know, this robot, you know, they have a unique drivetrain design, side game, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Can you yeah. talk about your drivetrain? Yeah, sure. So this year, we have a design that we decided to do for our Mechanum wheels. Um, we've seen several designs of it, but we're the third in the world with the unique design. We've, set, we've seen linkage designs that um, uh, the linkage pushes pins into the rollers to lock them so that you have more traction. Um, and we saw those two linkage designs and we thought we wanted to try to make our own. So we came up with this cone design and we use uh, off the shelf parts, which are these uh, Go Build a Spacers, Springs and Acetyl Idlers. It's modular so that there's two halves that sandwich these pieces in here so we can take them out and put them back in if needed. Um, what we do is we use a cone, a cone shaped piece that is pushed into these, these, uh, these pins right here and that locks the rollers from moving. Um, so that we have more traction, we have more accuracy and autonomous, and uh, we can push people and be a little bit more defensive. So that's our drivetrain right now. All right, great. So now that you have your drivetrain, can you talk about uh, your intake? Yeah, so our intake is we use several rows of flexible noodles and we have a rubber roller with uh, belts that run all the way through the inside of the intake. Um, we have passively sprung doors so that the pixels are held in place when they're um, being intaken, and uh, these belts carry them all the way to the back. But once we grab the pixels, it pulls them through these doors so that we can go and score. Um, we've had several iterations of the intake. Uh, the original designs started off as like a side-by-side, -side, but we realized that we don't have enough room in the robot. Um, later on, we came up with this so that it aligns them with more of like a funnel shape. Um, so they are brought in single file and then um, we tried to figure out how to run it all with one motor. So there's one intake motor hidden in between the drive motor and lift motor that is kind of like a three to one ratio so that the roller being a smaller diameter can spin just as fast, a little bit faster than the tip speed of these noodles to intake pixels um, super fast. The intake runs really fast. And um, that also just continues uh, transferring and, and grabbing to score uh, just as fast. Okay, and can you run the intake so we can see how it works? Sure. And so we just saw that transfer mechanism. So can you right. talk a little bit about how that works? So we have a claw that's grabbing from the inside of the pixels. Um, it's ran by one micro servo on the side here. And the claw just grabs from the inside of the pixels. So we have to drop two at once. We were thinking of doing a single drop design, but we stuck with this because that's easiest. Um, we have a bunch of degrees of freedom. So this right here is, is on a wrist on this uh, Axon Mini that can turn the pixels side by side so we can change orientation to score. We have a wrist, or I guess a, uh, another pitch direction so that we can move this like a virtual four bar and adjust the angle of um, where our pixels are aligned for the board. And um, like you saw, it intakes the pixels and then it grabs between them and pulls them through the doors and, and it reverses the intake so that it gets rid of any other pixels so we don't carry more than three. Um, we can show the, the deposit as well. So this will swing out and side deposit. Um, that shows, yeah. yeah, go ahead. That shows how we can do side deposit and score on the board while there's another robot. Um, and we can score on the other side as well. So this will swing over. So we can score on both sides, side deposit. Um, we've had to do a ton of counter springing. There's a big spring here to counter the weight of our arm. It's about 14 inches long. Um, and then we have more counter springing uh, with torsion springs on our four bar right here so that this can kind of be weightless when it's hanging here or in the intake. Um, so that's how we side deposit. We can deposit with um, robots if they're in front of the backdrop and if they're um, 
out of the way, we can still score straight out the back. Yeah. And what made you decide to go with a, a, a side deposit instead of something more normal? Um, we noticed that the backdrops this year, um, it's, it's not a lot of room for two robots to try to score. You can kind of squeeze in um, two robots and score at the same time, but we knew that that might be a problem. And so we wanted to attack that um, if possible. And so we decided to go with this design just to have something that's really, it's got a ton of degrees of freedom so that we, we can score with accuracy and more capability um, to work with our partners. And um, we just thought it would be really cool to work with this, this extremely long arm and see how well we can make it work. And so far it's working pretty well. Great, and then can you also talk a little bit about your material choice on your robot? I see a lot of different stuff going on. Yeah. So we have a lot of aluminum parts. Uh, these side plates uh, that we've cut out are CNC aluminum. Um, they're just spray painted. We didn't do anything special like powder coating, but we also have some um, Lexans polycarbonate um, to protect the side plates and the robot. Um, that protects our hubs as well. And then we've got a bunch of 3D printed parts. I would say that everything blue is 3D printed. Now, mainly everything blue is 3D printed. We have some black parts that are 3D printed as well. Um, and that's, that's about the main stuff we have. We have a few um, off the shelf go build a parts as well. But yeah, our same thing with our virtual four bar. It's also CNC aluminum because that was 3D printed. And we noticed that there's a lot of weaknesses and flexing with um, our deposit. All right. And now can we start getting into your end game task? So for drone, we decided we want something that's sort of compact and we got it as small as we could. Um, but we wanted to figure out something consistent to like rubber bands lose stretch and so do these, but these are some surgical tubing. This is what we use on some of the re uh, counter springing on when we were using, using it on our lift. Um, we're not anymore, but this is um, wrapped around some acetyl idlers. And we have different positions if we need to loosen or tighten this. And uh, it goes back here and locks on this um, kind of hook shape in the back here. And then we set the drone in and we run the whole match. And when we get to end game, um, we have a pretty consistent zone one drone. Whenever we go to score, the servo just drops it down and that will shoot the drone. We've gotten pretty consistent zone ones with that. Um, and our last thing is we have the hang. So this is incorporated into our slides. We weren't sure if we needed to have a different design um, for hang, like a separate mechanism to hang. But um, this year we, we tried to do an Oli cow, which is like this hook that kind of has a slant that jumps the robot up and it barely hangs. We had that on our uh, first iteration of the robot um, when we were running uh, matches while this was still being built. And when we came up with this, we couldn't find any room to put um, another hang mechanism. So we incorporated that into our lift and it's a uh, two uh, double lift motor, uh, or two, two motors on our lift, uh, double slides. And we just 3D printed these hooks um, and they've been pretty strong. But while we um, are shooting drone and scoring, we can use the lift to hang as well. So we can show you, if we extend it, this is gonna come out. And then we drive into the bar, and then when we hang, it pulls down and lifts our robot off the ground. All right, great. And so now, just as impressive as all of your hardware is your software, so can you walk me through what sensors are used on your robot? Yeah. We're using the three GoBuilda odometry pods for our localization. These are great, by the way. Um, and we're also using, can you turn the op mode off, please? Thank you. We're also using a micro switch in our intake to detect when one pixel is in because I2C switches kill your loop times and so that helps a bit there. And then for the other pixel, we have a distance sensor here or a beam break, which we use. And if we have it seen it for a specific amount of time, then we know that we have two pixels and we can help the drivers by automatically grabbing. We also have different presets for teleop using lookup tables and delays. Also the analog feedback on the axons is very helpful. So all it does is it goes back, it knows when it's back here, and then it goes, goes there for the driver, the driver operation. We also have a PIDF controller on the lift, and we found that we, can only, we only needed to use one motor encoder on the control hub, which was also good for our loop times because we don't have to go through the RS485 to the expansion hub because we're using that this year. So that would allow us to get about a 50 hertz autonomous loop times and allowed us to eventually get a two plus five. And so, yeah, we have the intake, which it just goes down sequentially for the stacks. And that's actually been surprisingly consistent with the stacks. I've been very surprised about that. And we just use Roadrunner for our um, actual trajectories. We're planning to move to a point to point. Um, 
and that's about it. Yeah. Software. Well, Brown Coach, thank you so much for your time uh, and congratulations on making it to all the way to elimination. This is really an amazing robot. So, yeah, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.